Hey guys, what I would like to do in this video is show you the Triton Audio Fethead Phantom which is in this little package here. So for the benefit of those of you who don't know, this is the Fethead, Fethead Phantom from Triton Audio and it is a, a preamp for condenser microphones. It just plugs directly into your microphone like that and this one passes through phantom power, so you need 48 volts of phantom power, but it also increases your gain. Now it doesn't say it here, but this actually increases gain by 18 decibels. Now you'll see a lot of these uh, little microphone adapters from Triton Audio. The, the most popular one is this one. This is the one that's used uh, for dynamic microphones, and it's the one that I've got right here. And this one provides 27 decibels of clean gain. Now you can use a cloud lifter, that's an alternative product, it works a little bit differently, but essentially does the same thing as far as providing extra gain. But I've went for the Fethead. I've been using this for a year or two and yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. But they do provide lots of different versions of this. There's one there with a filter. There's one that's designed for ribbon microphones, etc. I picked up mine here in the UK for £61, but it's £5 delivery. So it was about £66 and I got it from Studio Spares. So I paid for this the other day and I paid for, ne uh, I paid for the standard delivery at £4.99 or whatever it was. But they actually delivered it today after one day. So yeah, very pleased by that. Um, they were very quick for uh, with delivering that. So we'd use them again. Um, maybe a little bit more expensive in the USA though because it is made in Europe, this product. Now um, you can see it here, low noise, classy, JFET amplifier, balanced output with high headroom. Essentially though, what this is, is just a way to increase the gain that you have for your microphones. The one I've got here, this one here, this, this is the, the FET head, the one, the original, I guess, and it provides 27 decibels of gain. This is a very popular adapter for this microphone. This is the Shure SM7B. It's become very popular over the years. In the past, it was known for being used for recording Thriller by Michael Jackson, but it's been one of the most popular uh, microphones for, for podcasts as well. I've been using this microphone for a long time, but it's, it's very hungry, very, very hungry. I have quite a good audio interface, the Audient ID22. It's not a cheap audio interface. You're talking about 350, 400 in the UK. But one of the downsides, I guess, is that it only provides 60 decibels of gain. Now, that's not too bad, actually. There's a lot of um, audio interfaces out there that only provide 45 or 50 or 55 decibels of gain. This provides two mic uh, pre preamps, and it's got 60 decibels of gain. But there are alternatives out there, more expensive devices, more professional devices that provide 74 decibels of gain. But I found that with the Shure 7, uh, SM7B, if I don't use the FET head, it's just too quiet. And that's what I want to demonstrate in this video. This will be a long-ish video. And I, I do recommend using headphones or, you know, good speakers to listen to this because I will be doing some audio tests to demonstrate what this is all about. Um, now, the reason I've got this here is for the Shure SM7B, but the reason I've got the Phantom version is that I bought the Sennheiser 416. So a few days ago, I did a live stream. I bought a Sennheiser 416 shotgun microphone and I bought it secondhand. In that live stream, I tested it to see if it was real, and it is. But I really do like this microphone. I think it's fantastic. I've got it sitting over there just now, just behind the microphone. And if you want, I can kind of show you where it is. See, just poking out there. So that's where the microphone is just now, hidden out the way behind the camera. Now, I like the microphone. I really do like it. But one of the things that I did notice is that well, it wasn't loud enough. It wasn't loud enough. Hence why I have bought the Fethead Phantom. So before I uh, show you the Fethead Phantom, I just want to demonstrate what my problem is and what I'm trying to resolve. So if I show you this, this is my audio interface panel showing you uh, my microphone inputs. And if you look at the, the left and right one, the left and right one here, the left one is the one that's live, which is this. This is the Shure SM7B. This is the one that is being used right now. But if I bring this up, push this away, now I am using my Sennheiser 416 and I'm using it from here. This is the microphone and I'm going to do something very annoying here but you can see that is the microphone that is being used. This is the one that's live. Now the position it's in there is actually quite good. It's, it's off camera. 
and if I turn this way, you can still hear me. I'm still kind of in its in its range, um, but I think it's a little bit too quiet. Now, the setting that I have it just now, I'm going to turn it up, and I do apologise for the, the extra noise. I might clip a little bit. Now, it's at a better level, a little bit higher, but can you hear that? There is a large noise floor right now. You know, there's a lot of kind of background noise there that you can hear, and that is what I'm trying to fix with the Phantom uh, the fat head phantom. I'm trying to address that issue by reducing the level on my audio interface. Ideally what I want to do, in fact I can do it through the panel here, ideally what I want to do is bring it down to a level where you can't hear that kind of background hiss, the, the noise floor. The problem is right now, well you can see it, you can hear it, you can hear that, you know I really want to be bouncing around the yellow mark but when I do that the noise floor is really really high and that's what I'm trying to address with this product so I'm going to bring this down bring this one back up bring this microphone along you can hear me again properly and you can see that I've now turned off the Sennheiser 416 I've muted it effectively that's what I've done so what I'd like to do at this point is show you the fat head phantom you know what the problem is now you know the problem that I'm trying to address um, and this is it here, comes in this little tube and this I'm hoping is going to help me turn the, the Sennheiser 416 into from a good mic to a great mic because right now it, it's a good microphone but I'd have to hold that shotgun microphone really right up to my face to get a really good sound out of it. Now that is not a criticism of that microphone, that's a criticism of my audio interface not having enough gain. So, this is the tube. To be honest, I'm not a big massive fan of the, this packaging. It was the same with the one that came with this because after you open this up, yeah, it's not ideal as far as storing it. But I mean, it's a small device, so maybe maybe this is the way you should do it, I don't know. But this is the Fet Head Phantom. Now, what I will say, uh, and this is a criticism that a lot of other people have said is that this looks identical to the original one and the reason that can be a problem is that if you put this one into a dynamic microphone or a ribbon microphone you could cause some damage you could cause some damage so be careful about this I don't care what you do but do something to help you remind yourself that this is the phantom it does say phantom on there but if you actually look at them they're, they're very very similar put a red stick around it put a red band around it make sure you know that this is the one for condenser microphones. So let's jump over to my overhead camera and I'll zoom down a little bit. You guys can get my keyboard out of the way. So let's get this open. It's like opening a, a tube of Smarties. Right, let's get this open. So this is it here. Nice little bag. Triton Audio. Quite good if you're you're um, travelling with it, and this is the Fet Head Phantom. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That's it there. Made in Holland. It's a very simple device. XLR input there. You've got your XLR pins at the back there. And they also give you a little user guide, which is really not telling you anything really that you can't get from the website, but it's not really a, a user guide, it's more of a spec sheet, unless I'm missing something here. Does this open up? No, it does not. So yeah, that's not really doing much. So I now have the Fet Head Phantom and if I turn this around a little bit, you can see they're almost identical. So what I like to do at this point is put this into my Sennheiser 416 and we'll hear if the noise floor is a little bit better. And remember, that microphone has quite a high noise floor. But what I'll do to show you this before I move ahead, um, I'll, just, I'll just jump up the, the audio here. I'm going to switch to my Sennheiser 416 again. So now you're listening to the Sennheiser 416 
and maybe a little bit too quiet. I've got it set up quite close to the top on my audio interface. But now we're going to see if we can improve the quality of this sound where I'm sitting right now using the Fet Head Phantom. So the Triton Audio Fet Head Phantom is now attached to my shotgun microphone, my Sennheiser 416, and you can't see it. It is just out of frame. There it's there. And I've got it kind of pointing down to me a little bit. Now I do have to experiment a little bit with the position. I might put it up higher up. I might get a different shock mount because the one I've got is pretty bad. But right away I can tell that the audio levels are higher. The gain level is higher because I've turned down the gain about 15 decibels or so. So if I was using this microphone, I probably wouldn't have to use headphones, which is what I'd normally use with my Shure SM7B. But using this microphone, I could just talk to the, the camera like this and have the microphone there. And I've got it in a position where if I'm turning around and looking at the webcam, everything would be okay. But what I'd like to do is show you the levels. So I'll bring back up my audio interface and you can see where the audio levels are dancing around. If I bring over my Shure SM7B, this is still muted, but what I'm going to do is put this back on. So the Shure SM7B is now being recorded. You're probably hearing me in stereo, but the reason I'm showing you this is look at the first two channels. The first channel is the Shure SM7B. The second channel is the Sennheiser 416 shotgun microphone. And there's a slight difference here, but it looks like both microphones are dancing around at the same level, which is what I want. I want the same level of audio, but I want it from the Sennheiser rather than the Shure. SM7B. So, like I was saying, I've turned down the gain level by about 15 decibels or so, but what I'd like to do at this point is turn the gain level back up to basically where it was before. The, the, the level I was at previously in order to get, you know, where I am just now, kind of dancing around the yellow, I had to be previously just a little bit below full, about 55 decibels. So, I'll turn it down. I'll turn it up, sorry. So I'm, I'm going to have to speak a little bit quieter because if I speak, I'll clip. I'm right in the red now. You can see I'm at the red, but you can tell right away. Previously, I had this setting and this is the setting I was using before the Fet Head Phantom. And yeah, it's a lot louder, a lot louder. But I can hear a noise floor at this level once again. Of course, I wouldn't use it at this level. I'm clipping right now. If I bring it down, I want to bring it down to a level, to a level here where I'm still hearing a little bit of a noise floor if I'm honest. I still hear a little bit. I don't know if it's just me through the headphones right now. I'm hearing a little bit of a noise floor, maybe because I've set my headphones too high. But yeah, I still have to play around with the audio levels. Might bring it a little bit lower. So yes, I still have to play with the audio levels, but you can see what has happened here. The Fet Head Phantom has given me well, officially 18 decibels of gain, but I, I know myself, I've put it down by about 15 decibels and I'm getting the same levels that I, was get pre that I was getting previously, but I have significantly reduced the noise floor. Before, to get this level of audio from the Sennheiser 416, I was getting a lot of kind of noise in the background, but now I don't get that. And you can see the levels bouncing around. It's, you know, maybe I could put it up, maybe I can put it down. This is something I'll need to mess about with in post to get the right level but the point is the fat head phantom is doing its job the only criticism i'll maybe turn it up a little bit the only criticism i would give is that i would have liked more i would have liked more gain more audio level but that is simply not possible the the sure sm7b which is still muted right now this provides 27 decibels of gain to my sure sm7b but it is important to remember that the Fet Head Phantom, with this tiny, tiny, um, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll drop the window there, with this tiny little user manual, the Fet Head Phantom provides around 18 decibels of gain, but it's also allowing the 48 volts of phantom power to get through to the microphone because my Sennheiser, my boom shotgun microphone here, does require phantom power. Here, the phantom power is being used solely to provide the 27 decibels of gain, but with the Phantom, it's allowing the, the Phantom power to pass through to the microphone to power it. Now, 
I'm not saying that my Sennheiser 416 is set up perfectly here. It's not. I need to buy a different shock mount. I probably need to put the microphone in a different position, maybe higher up. I need to keep out the frame, but I do need to put it in a different position. Try and do a lot of tests. But this is one of those things that even if I had to upgrade and get a better audio uh, interface, a better audio recorder, something that did have higher um, microphone preamps, you know, if I jump up to something like the Zoom F8 or something like the Mix Pre kind of range, sound devices, uh, a sound devices audio recorder, if I jump up to something like that that has 74 decibels of microphone gain, I might not have to use this, but I still have it, which means that I can use this to drop the noise floor even more, but I can also use this with other uh, audio interfaces and devices and all that that I have. For example, I have the Zoom U24. The, uh, the microphone preamps in that, they're not the best, they're certainly not the strongest, which is why I, I, you need to use something like this to boost the signal. So I'm not saying that everyone should run out here and buy this, I'm not saying that. It's 65 pounds though in the UK, I think that this is a fantastic little thing to have. I didn't even think too much uh, about buying this because I've been using the original Fethead for a few years. I know how good this is. I know how useful it is. And I know that if I do buy another audio interface that doesn't require the Fethead, then I'm still going to keep the Fethead. It's one of those things that you just keep in your kit. If you don't use it just now, you'll use it later and you'll always have it. There will be a time when a particular mic, a dynamic mic, or in this case, a condenser microphone doesn't have enough gain. And this is where something like a Fethead or a cloud lifter becomes very, very useful. But of course, the cloud lifter is only really being used for dynamic microphones. Fethead or Triton Audio design ones for ribbon microphones. They've got ones that, you know, use a filter and they've got a lot of different versions of it. The two most popular ones, of course, are the, the, the regular Fethead, the one that I've got back there. Um, which, and again, just to remind you guys, that microphone is now muted. But um, yes, the Phantom is also quite popular as well. But remember, this looks almost identical to the original Fet Head, but do not use this with something like a ribbon mic. You can cause a lot of damage if you, if you pass that Phantom power onto a ribbon microphone. I saw a lot of comments from people getting annoyed because they said it's too easy to get them mixed up. Put something around it, put a big sticker around it, do what you have to do. These things, this, you know, the logo and all that, over time, the logo, especially if you've got it in a stand like that, it will scrape off. But these things are built to last. Don't worry about that. It still, it still will do the job. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Fethead Phantom. It looks like a, a tube of mints. This is one of those things that I think that if you're in a position like me where you've got an audio interface and it doesn't have enough gain from the built-in microphone preamps. This is a very quick and a very simple solution to giving yourself more gain. Now, of course, down the line, we all want to get better audio recorders, bet better audio interfaces, better mic preamps. But until then, you can buy something like this. But as I was saying, even if you do upgrade, even if you do upgrade your main audio recorder and you do get better microphone preamps, this is not something I would sell. This is something you should keep in your kit and just have it there. It's a very, very useful thing to have. The only downside, I guess, is that it only works with one microphone. It's not like you can use this for four microphones. You'd have to buy four different ones. But I'll leave a, a link to the official website on tritonaudio.com. Check out the sales page. Read more about it. Do your research, as always, guys. Don't just buy something without doing your research. But hopefully... I've shown you guys, I've, I've demonstrated what this is all about and what it can be used for. If you're a, a you know, a, you're recording audio for podcasts, if you're re recording audio for your band, if you're doing YouTube, whatever you're doing, if you're recording uh, from a microphone and you don't feel that you're getting enough power to your condenser microphone or the original one using, a, you know, via a dynamic microphone, that's the word. But whatever microphone that you're using, if you're not getting enough gain, if it's too quiet or if the noise floor is too high when you do put it to a, an appropriate level, then yeah, the fat head can help you out. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I do not claim to be an expert on audio, but if you've got any questions about the original fat head or the fat head phantom, please do leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer you. If I can't help you, I'll try and point you in the right direction. I am still recording through my Sennheiser, through the Fethead Phantom, 
I apologise for the audio levels going up and down, but I don't want to mess about with the audio. I want you guys to hear the good and the bad. And yeah, I'm not going to be changing the audio, processing it or doing anything like that. What you hear is what you get. Uh, what you get. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been the Fathead Phantom, and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.